Sally, we're now going to travel all the way across the country to uh, some mild turf, the scenic North Shore of, of Long Island, to meet a, a serial entrepreneur, a former member of the New York State Assembly who ditched a career in politics to pursue a passion for helping great ideas blossom into successful businesses. Founder and CEO of a biomedical firm, he's also executive director of the Business Incubator Association of New York State. Please welcome a man who speaks the global language of innovation, Mark Alessi. Mark? Well, thank you, Lee. I don't know who wrote that biography, but I have to hire them. <laughs> uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have been invited here today and watching the program with such great entrepreneurs. Uh, I, this is what I love to do. Uh, like Lee had said, uh, I've been an entrepreneur since my teens myself. I did spend some time in politics um, and then migrated towards entrepreneurial policy, uh, started launching companies, left politics completely. And, but because of my role, both in innovation and formerly in government, uh, I was approached by the Incubator Association a number of years ago. And uh, I have a slide deck. I wanna tell you a little bit about them and then a little bit about some of the international programs, which I know is of interest to one business world. So I'm gonna share my screen. And so the, the, the Business Incubator Association uh, of New York State was actually created uh, back in 2006. Um, I know it's listed as 2005, but that first meeting was a very organic meeting of about 15 incubators around New York State who had never spoken to each other. So I know that you have entrepreneurs from, from all over and various ecosystems here. And um, you know, I know one of our frustrations as entrepreneurs sometimes is that navigating to the resources that would help us uh, is sometimes uh, it's seemingly impossible. And when incubators aren't communicating with each other, and not only sharing best practices, but sharing, not duplicating resources, knowing who in the ecosystem is doing something really well that can help other incubators companies. That's what Bianis really uh, came about for. It went from 15 incubators to over 100 incubators. I think we're at 112 incubators as of today and accelerators. And if you add up the companies that are housed or mentored through those incubators, there's about 3,000 uh, startup companies in our network. And we estimate a little over 10,000 in our alumni network. In, uh, companies that have gone through the incubation system, graduated an incubator, survived and, 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 and hopefully thrived. Um, but that, that's a little cross-section of, of the association. Our board is comprised of some of the best incubator managers in New York. Uh, for those of you who are located here in New York, you might recognize some of these folks. Uh, Tom Scrivers out of Cornell University and runs their incubation and entrepreneurship programs. Uh, Steve Cayune is out of NYU uh, and, and runs their entrepreneurship and incubation programs. And then, you know, as you move through the state, I won't list everybody out, but Western New York is, is um, represented in our board. Uh, Central New York, Northern New York. There isn't a sector of this state that it does not have uh, a growing and vibrant ecosystem now. Uh, and that's something that we're, we're really proud of. Um, and this is a, it's a member led organization. These board members are voted on just by the incubators. Uh, so why is incubation important? Probably for the people on this call, I don't have to go too far into this, but you all have heard one out of 10 startups succeed. Uh, you know, does that mean that 90% of startups fail? Maybe not necessarily, but um, some of them miss the mark, some do fail. But when you incubate and you have the right mentorship and not every incubator does it right, but uh, we, we try to change that. But when you have the right mentorship, 50% of incubated startups succeed, raise capital, go on and, and put their product into the, uh, in, in, into the marketplace. So uh, this is an important uh, component of getting new innovation out there. And um, a lot of our incubator managers are former serial entrepreneurs themselves. Uh, and again, when I say our incubator managers, this is a trade association of individual incubators, many of them associated with universities, 
some of them are, some of them are independently run, uh, but we, we don't run these incubators. We just help them with advocacy, best practices, education. Um, but I would say just prior to COVID and then definitely since COVID, we saw a growing need uh, for a more macro program. And that's what I uh, was talking to Stelios about and some of the folks at One Business World, uh, where companies that were coming to the US um, you know, needed, uh, needed to know what the landscape was. And some economic development offices would work with our members on an individual basis, but not get to know the full breadth of what was available in the New York ecosystem. So our members asked us to join, uh, to, to start, not join, uh, what is called a soft landings program. And the intent of this program is to work with the trusted network of incubators themselves, but also folks that we know in the ecosystem uh, here in New York and internationally, and I'll explain that in a second, uh, to make sure that entrepreneurs, when they're, when they're coming to New York, for example, um, aren't spinning their wheels, that they get a certain level of uh, mentorship uh, if there are cultural issues to make sure that they're whatever they're pitching, whether it's for funding or whether it's uh, for their first customers, that um, things don't get lost in translation. And so we have a, a process, and I'll go into that in a little bit, of it's a short program to introduce them to the US market through New York and to introduce them to people, not only at our incubators in our network, but folks that we know in New York from other sectors that interact with us. And I know there's folks uh, on the call that are not from New York or not from the United States. We're looking for partners for the other direction. So we have 3,000 startups, like I said, in our incubator network. Many of them need to, to enter other markets, whether it's the other side of the United States on the West Coast, uh, or it's Europe, or it's Asia, or, or anywhere else. We're looking for trusted partners and programs that we could have a a two-way um, soft landings exchange. Um, and I'm not gonna go into our pre-incubation program, that's more for domestic companies here in New York. Um, but I think that I thought the soft landings exchange is what I should really focus on uh, for, for today's talk. So I, I told you we had a short program. This is a little um, synopsis of, of what that looks like. Uh, when we have uh, companies that are coming from Madrid, for example, is, is one of the, uh, the metropolitan centers uh, that we're focused on and have built relationships with, uh, Belgrade, Serbia, uh, or uh, Prague uh, in Czech, uh, the Czech Republic. Um, those companies that are coming here, the first week we're focusing on making sure they understand the differences between their business culture and, and, and American business culture. And we have uh, professors that teach international studies uh, and international business at a number of the universities here in New York that um, uh, help provide uh, those two modules. Uh, then I know, you know today has been a lot about marketing. So we pull together marketing experts, not you know, our incubators you know, are, are part of the program, but we also look uh, for some of the best marketing experts that we are aware of in New York to listen to the product pitch and give some feedback and see if there's some deficiencies on how it's being told and a, a little bit of mentorship. Now, it's not intended to be the, the, the end uh, of, of that journey for a company coming to New York. They're going to need help with marketing longer term. Um, and they're going to need more than this eight week program, but this program is an introduction and a bit of a crash course to get them ready for their first few customers here. Um, and then in, in week three, this is all virtual. The first eight weeks, the last four weeks are done, uh, in person, uh, here in New York. And I'll show that on the next slide, but in week three from their home countries, uh, they're pinging in from zoom like today. Uh, and they get an introduction to 
the incubators in our network that are in their industry. So if it's an energy company, we have about 12 incubators that that is all they do is clean tech and alternative energy. Uh, if it's a biotech company, we have 15 incubators in the network that only do biotech. Uh, but there isn't an industry, I'm not gonna go through every single industry, but there isn't an industry that is not represented in some way in, in our membership. Uh, there's actually been a lot of startups this year coming into the program that are food and ag. And uh, people were surprised when you think of New York, how are you gonna help a company that's selling into the ag market? And New York is a very diverse place, not only ethnically and racially and, and you know, from, from the, the, the socio background, but geographically, it's a very d diverse place. And uh, we have incubators in the middle of rural areas that are specifically helping people sell into the rural market and the ag market. Um, we do an analysis on product market fit. Some products sell in Europe and might not fit the regulatory framework here in the US. And for example, we're analyzing some companies that have um, software that would sell into uh, hospitals for helping with their billing systems. But we're, we had to analyze whether this company's product was a good fit for the way uh, reimbursements are done through Medicare and Medicaid. Um, and then we go into a, a little bit of a, a virtual customer discovery. And uh, that's kind of based on uh, the lean startup methodology where you're supposed to get out and talk to a hundred customers in a very unbiased way. You're not supposed to talk about your product. So we have a whole method to train a company to talk to their first customers here in New York, but to learn as much as they possibly can and not sell them to begin with in that first meeting. And then they come back and they share with us what they've learned and uh, we help them um, determine what the next meeting should look like. Or, you know, if, if there are lessons learned there that can save them a lot of time and money in not tackling a market that they thought, you know, was right for them, they might pivot. Um, but we get them ready by week seven to start really pitching customers for sales. Uh, and, and the goal is that by the end of the virtual program, when they come here in person, there's still a few classes, but the large majority of what they're here for is to talk to their first customers. Um, going into the next slide, then they come here in person. So the, the breakdown for this year um, in you know, the virtual, that's going to run uh, between August 15th and October 15th. And uh, then they have two weeks off and they come in person November 1st. And they're here throughout November. Uh, our, our annual meeting for the Incubator Association is December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in New York City. So this cohort for soft landings ends on November 30th. The companies are welcome to stay an extra three days and attend our conference for free, where, again, not only the New York incubators are going to be there and people from the New York innovation ecosystem, but other incubators from the country and, and actually globally have expressed interest in coming to this New York City meeting. Uh, part of our meeting and what, what attracts them is the fact that we do a deep dive in what's working in that regional ecosystem in New York. And in New York City, uh, if you look at what was happening in 2008 and 2009, there wasn't a lot of activity from the, innovate, the, the, the typical startup innovation sector. Uh, we, we definitely had startups, we definitely had tech companies, but there wasn't this concerted effort to uh, really mentor companies and, and what we've seen is a huge one investment from New York City and New York State, but we've seen a lot of growth. And so we went from not a whole lot going on in 2009 to arguably the second largest innovation ecosystem in the world. And there's a lot of incubator managers and economic development professionals globally that want to learn how that happens so they could bring that home and, and, and replicate part of it. You know, not, not every place is the same but uh, there's definitely lessons to be learned. So for the companies participating in the soft landings program, 
there's a lot of folks that are going to be at this meeting that help startups and, and, and that's our goal or scale ups. Um, so the, the last uh, four weeks uh, is two weeks in person classes in the morning and then they go out and do customer discovery and that's going to happen in New York City. And then the last um, two weeks are in other parts of New York State. Um, again, based on what their uh, uh, industry is, they're going to be paired up with incubators that are a good fit for them. And those incubators are charged with making sure those entrepreneurs get the relationships in that region that they need if they want to make sure that they make sales uh, or their early sales in the US. So this is all geared towards the first and early sales. There is some costs uh, associated with the program. We're trying to work with some of the uh, consulate offices and economic development offices to provide scholarships to their own uh, companies. And some of them are doing that. Um, but um, yeah, that's on a case by case basis. Um, and again, so the soft landings program uh, is, is geared to take a company that is looking to, to enter the US market and help them do that in a way that de-risks that, that, that endeavor. Um, if you're working with incubator managers who day in and day out help early stage companies make their first sales, uh, they know the players at a, you know, at a larger established Fortune 500 company that are able to adopt new innovative products. You know, there, there are some very large companies that are very bureaucratic. Um, and if you don't go to the right person, um, you, you could even cut a deal, but they end up not using the software. Uh, but if you get to the right person who knows how to socialize it in their, in their company, uh, that does it again on a regular basis with our early stage companies here in New York, it, 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 you could have uh, better results. Um, outside of companies that would be interested in this, I know that there are folks on the call that have um, uh, you know, their own services in this space and we're looking for partnerships. So it's one of the reasons I wanted to join today's call. And I think I probably used all my time already, so I'll stop there. Okay, Mark, thank you very much.